the trend continues what's going on welcome on into the stock trends channel we are continuing a very very strong trend to the upside here on the s n p Here's the one year, one day chart. You can see what's happened since Wednesday when we had the FOMC announcement and Powell had his press conference, all that good stuff. What we got was a gap up for Thursday and then just kind of a slow consolidation bleed, if you will. Uh, and I say bleed, but really, it's, I don't know if I would really classify it that way, but you do just have this slight pullback, really minimal in terms of percentage moves, but it hasn't done a lot. We haven't gotten a lot of follow through continuation, but if you look at the bigger picture charts, we do. I mean, we have on the weekly time frame, like we are going up. If you just look a little bit closer, the past couple of weeks, things were kind of quiet in this little range, has been trending up, yes. And we thought maybe we're gonna break out and have a bigger move, but we haven't gotten a lot of follow through on that move after Powell. So. Coming up next week, we have a couple, well, we have one big thing to watch, which I'll pull up in just one second. So I want to cover that. I want to cover sentiment and also want to cover a couple of charts of interest. So let us dive right in. Right now, we are looking at TradingView. You can get $15 off a TradingView subscription if you want to upgrade. We use premium. You can use a free one or you can use a paid one. It is like the gold standard when it comes to charting. I do all my charting here, and you can even trade on a lot of different brokerage accounts through your trading view charts, which is why we recommend it. Okay, so while we have the S&P here, you're going to see a similar story if you jump over to QQQ. Very similar. Was actually up on Friday and DIA, the Dow. Kind of a similar, was, a, was weaker, but still the general gist was broke out and then pulled back a bit. Where you're not going to see the same story is a little bit on the IWM, the Russell. This didn't make a new high yet, so we didn't hit a new all-time high there. We had to break up over to, or all-time highs, we're not even close. A new yearly high, a high for the year, would be up over 210. All-time high would put the Russell up over 244, 245 or so. So we got a long ways to go. However, again, same deal. It's been relatively strong with higher lows. Just, you know, it depends upon how you view the time frames. So after we had Powell, and we've been getting some hotter inflation readings as of late, but what I do want to mention was that the 10-year finishes the week at 4.2%, give or take, which it's it could not break above 4.35, which has been the high of the year, and it's starting to break down a little bit here. Now, this is a key spot because it was a prior area of a little resistance before a pretty big move up that we saw on the 10-year up to that 435 this 4.2 area was something that we were watching closely, as you can see, like kind of right in here. And then we broke out and then now we're back at that level. So maybe an area of interest, but if you were to draw some rough, and I mean rough trend lines, it's not perfect because this, this wick is pretty low and stuff. But if you were to draw some rough trend lines, okay, you're going to put this, this thing down towards around 4.1 or so percent which would be the area that I'd be watching closely. If it breaks below that, then you were looking at this low and we're gonna see if it breaks down. The bigger picture, obviously with a pretty strong uptrend. However, since late last year, we had this pretty big move down and now we're just kind of back testing in it. So I'm curious to see what happens here. If that's a sign, you know, that's come back since Wednesday. It's pulled back since Wednesday. We didn't see follow through momentum straight through to new highs. And so that's at least notable um, where we have seen a decent follow through to the upside after Wednesday, actually really was Thursday was the dollar. The dollar's actually been strong. Uh, gold and silver have pushed up and then rejected uh, those moves recently, which we'll pull up those charts here next. Then I want to get into sentiment and all that stuff. So jumping over to gold, you can see we had a break of this little, you know, flag and then it popped up very big move. So there was a trade there for sure. If you caught it, the problem that I saw on this was that, you would have had to get in prior to Jerome Powell speaking when it started to break out. And then, you know, by the time he started, he stopped speaking, it was already up here. So the move, a lot of the move actually happened prior to Powell, which was kind of a pain, but either way it, it broke out, push up. Now it's back testing. We're going to see if it can hold the back test of the prior area of the breakout, or if it's going to roll back over with the dollar being strong, we'll see, it might roll over. Silver, a similar situation, push up, and silver pushed up right up into the highs of the past like year and a half or so 
of trading. Let's just see. Yeah, the past the past year. Silver's highs are up here around $26 or so. And it's hit that a couple of times and rejected every single time. So we'll see if it wants to break through or if we're going to get a bigger move down. But so far, a pretty big rejection that we saw on Thursday with a little follow through on Friday. Although it did kind of put in, you know, upper wick, lower wick and not closing a substantially, you know, substantially red by Friday. Now, Bitcoin, on the other hand, still can't get back up over the upper 60s, 68, 69K. These highs right here, if you jump into a one hour chart, you can see it a little bit better. You can see more of a trend developing here. We need to break back up into the upper 60s to break that trend. Otherwise, we are technically downtrending on Bitcoin over the past couple of days. So that's the, the look right there in the grand scheme. It's not a big pullback. So at least we want to mention it, but nothing super crazy. We'll get back to the charts here in a second. We have a couple of chart requests, and then I want to dive into sentiment first. So sentiment came out this week, 43% bullish, 29.6 neutral, and 27.2 bearish. Why is this important? Well, this is the least bullish and the most bearish we've seen at least in the past couple of weeks. So it's something to note. We are seeing at least a shift to a degree and more people may be joining like the, okay, we can probably pull back at some point here soon side of the argument. Now, if you jump over to fear and greed, you're going to see a 72. Let's just refresh that to make sure it's at 72. 72. Yes, it's still there. Momentum's been up there. Strength and breath have been up there. Put calls, five day average put call ratio. This is actually creeping back up to 0.8. So it's interesting that we've been seeing more puts started to get purchased and it makes sense. And it fits that argument or it fits this narrative of, or this data that a little bit less bulls and a little more bears, seeing that put calls are creeping up. Not a lot, but over the course of this past month, the past three weeks, put call ratio has gone from 0.69 up to now over or around 0.8, uh, roughly. So that is something to pay attention to, a little, little more put action, a little more bearish bets being put down on the market. Next week, Fairly quiet week until Friday, March 29th. That is when we have personal income, personal spending, and PCE, all this stuff. This end on top of that at 11.30 a.m. Eastern time, Jerome Powell is speaking. So you've got a lot going on on Friday that could be catalyst the market could be waiting for or looking for for potentially some cues, some answers, some direction. I just like to look at it as a catalyst. I don't think too, too much about the, what this stuff means and the numbers. You could get, you can go into a massive you know rabbit hole, and and it's good to understand at a base level of what's going on. Yes, I'm not saying don't, but the reality is that trying to look at PCE and saying, oh my gosh, it was higher than expected, but the market's going up. How does that make sense? Don't try to make sense of it from a what the stock market does perspective. Is what I'm saying. It, it, it's it's I don't want to say it's a waste of your time, but it, in in reality, it could get you in a whipsaw and really throw you for a loop when it doesn't need to. It's just a catalyst. What happens on the backside, we can react to and potentially use to our advantage, but know when these things are happening so that you're not gonna put yourself in a position where like you're massively leveraged on a trade when then Powell starts speaking and then it's you know spiking up, spiking down, stop loss hits, then it goes to your take profit. It's like, okay, well, why was I bothering with that? So I, I've been there, done that, so I understand. Okay, so a couple chart requests. NVDA, check this chart out. I thought it was actually really interesting. A very nice close to finish off the week. It had better volume than the past two days, than Wednesday and Thursday. Very nice close, and it's starting to break out. So if you jump over to a four-hour chart or even a one-hour, I'll go to a one-hour chart. You can kind of see it. So it broke out over this level in the one-hour chart, which is the highs of Thursday morning. And a four-hour chart, a little cleaner. You can see it breaking out to the upside on decent volume. Nothing amazing, but decent volume. We're in a spot right now on NVIDIA where it's like, here's all-time highs. They're not that far away. And that's around 975. So watching that into next week is my view. Now, the reason why is because with how NVIDIA reacted a couple weeks ago, uh, back on this massive Friday, March 8th, big, big down day. With how NVIDIA reacted there, think about this. Very big candle, bearish engulfing. If I had to guess, there may be a lot of people who went short NVIDIA, on that day or shortly after that day and put their stop losses up off the top of this range. So up towards 975. So my question is, are those stops still there? And if they are, are we going to see a squeeze if Nvidia gets up into that area? And does that set it towards a thousand dollars? What happens 
with momentum. Again, the stock's been so strong. Does it have to do that? No, absolutely not. My suspicion is that there are a lot of stop losses for people who went short NVIDIA back on, you know, March 8th or March 9th, or I guess March 8th was the Friday. So I guess the next day would be the Monday, the 11th, who went short and now could be looking at a, a, a good, because if I was shorting NVIDIA, where would I put my stop loss? If I was swing trading it short, I put my stop loss up here, 100%, because that would invalidate the bearish and goal thing and this pattern of maybe it's going to roll over. And if I haven't gotten out already, I would be getting out if we broke over here. That's just the way I would think. And so I'm thinking that that could cause a decent reaction next week. Highly recommend you keep it on the radar and watch it. It was strong despite the S&P not being super strong the past day or two. So I think that that's worth watching. Okay. P-A-N-W Palo Alto Networks. This is an interesting one because it had a pretty bad reaction earnings and a big bounce, but now it's in consolidation mode. So the areas I'd be watching are a break underneath 276 and a break above 292. That's where I'd put two alerts. And if we break underneath, maybe there's an opportunity for a short. The problem that I have with a lot of shorts in general is that if the S&P continues to say, stay super strong with the uptrend, I have a hard time looking at that and saying short. I really do. Because I have been in a couple of trades so far this year that have not panned out despite the chart setup looking great, breaking down, just haven't panned out because, and I not because, there's a lot of reasons why. There's no one reason. But with the market being super strong, just not in a very high momentum environment for the downside. So maybe you get some, but then it reverses and then it chops around. And I think Tesla is a great example of that because you got Tesla to do essentially that where it broke down underneath the level. But what it has done since was just chop. So it broke down a little bit and then just chop. No follow through, at least so far on Tesla. So it's something to keep in mind. Okay. Crowd is next. CRWD. This one's a little more interesting because it has this big earnings, you know, gap up and then sell off. It really is coiled up and just in a tight range. If you look at the past, you know, couple of days, couple of weeks, actually, it's tightening up. So you have a range from around 311 or 310 up to about 340. So a $30 range on crowd above 340. That gets me interested to the upside. Then you're looking at these highs right here. And then below this 310, then we're looking down to the downside. The problem is it's it's kind of weird with these big gap down, these big gaps on the chart. It's kind of wonky. So I, I'd be kind of cautious again on the downside until we see the S&P roll over, but targets the downside down towards $300. You've got a volume gap there. And then below that down into this 260 to 250, or really this 260 range volume gaps to be watching. That's where at least where my mind would flow. There you guys have it. If you are looking for a place to journal, track, and log all of your trades, Tradezilla, you can save 10% with TC10 as a discount code. Check it out. I use it every single day, or not every day. Whenever I trade, I track all my trades through Tradezilla. I've been doing a lot more swing trades lately, so looking at bigger time frames, one hour, four hour dailies, and even weeklies versus bothering with the shorter term time frames. And I've been liking it, so that means less trades for me, but my size has gone up. So that's personally where I'm, at, where I'm at. Hope this is helpful. Leave any chart requests in the comment section down below, and I'll see you guys in the next one.